making a baby blanket. to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make my Snuggle Me Baby Blanket. It is so cuddly. It is super easy. The only thing that makes this blanket complicated is the pipsqueak yarn that I used to make the blanket because it is so highly textured. It can be a little tricky to see the stitches, but the stitches themselves are super easy. So, Follow along with me. I'm going to show you the tips and tricks that I used to get through this project and work with the Pip Squeak yarn. All right. If at any point in this video you do like what you see or you're having a good time enjoying the content, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell and then select all. That way you get notified whenever I release a brand new video. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects, tips and tricks fun giveaways, and you are not going to want to miss out. The pattern that I created for this Snuggle Me Baby Blanket, I'm going to put in both the description section and the comment section below. If you really want to adjust the size of this blanket or the materials of this blanket, you absolutely can. I will put a link to the video right up here where I show you how to figure out how many chains you're going to need in the foundation row to make whatever size blanket that you want to make. And also if you want to change the size yarn and you need to figure out that adjustment, it shows you how to do that there too. Okay. Awesome. All right. So the blanket that I made here, it measures 36 inches wide by 53 inches long. I will also show you some pictures here that I took of this blanket to just give you an idea of what this blanket fully looks like. When we dive into the actual uh, tutorial on how to make this blanket, I did switch up the yarn to pink colors. That way you can see this is not just a blanket for one gender. You can really play with colors, change it up, make it your own. And so I'm going to have this blanket in both blue and pink. <laughs> All right, so once you are ready, you have the pattern, or you're just ready to dive into this tutorial, let's head straight over to what materials I used to make this Snuggle Me Blanket. The materials that you're going to need to make the Snuggle Me Blanket will include the Pip Squeak yarn. That's exactly what I used, Bernat Pip Squeak yarn. It is a size five weighted yarn. So if you want to use any other yarn besides pipsqueak yarn, but keep my same dimensions, just make sure it is a size five weight. These two yarns, this, I'm going to be making the pink color. This outside color is going to be Candy Girl. And the inner part of the blanket is Tickle Me Pink. The blue colors that I used were also a Bernat pipsqueak yarn. And I used Funny Bunny print, and that was the multicolored uh, border for the blanket and baby blue. All right, so that was the blue blanket. I used four skeins of each color to make this blanket. I used approximately 808 yards for the whole blanket, including the border, 736 meters, 28 ounces, or 800 grams of yarn total to make this entire blanket. Okay, so hopefully that'll help you out. Again, if you wanna make any adjustments to this blanket, making it bigger, using a different sized yarn even, uh, check out the video that I mentioned in the beginning of, the video, of this video that I made showing you how to make adjustments to your blanket to know how many chains you're gonna need in your foundation row to make your desired dimensions of your blanket. Okay, I will also put a link to that video in both the description section and comment section below this video for easy access. Just click on that link. All right, so the crochet hook that I used for this blanket was an I9 or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. I also used a pair of scissors, tapestry needle or yarn needle to weave in all of those ends and optional is a measuring tape just because it is a little bit more difficult to count your rows in this blanket because this yarn is so highly textured. Sometimes it's just more helpful to follow along with your dimensions and see, have I reached my dimension yet or am I still going? All right, so once you have all of your materials, that's all you really need for this blanket, let's go ahead and dive right into actually making it. 
All right, so let's begin with the color that you want to use on the inside rectangle of the blanket. That can be whatever color you choose, even if you wanted to flip flop the blanket and start with the multicolor and border it with the solid. Have fun with it, make it your own. So we're gonna start with a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook, and we are ready to begin. So as you probably have already noticed, this yarn is extremely textured. So you're going to want to make all of your stitches loose. If you have a trouble with tension and making your stitches too tight, you may wanna go up a crochet hook size or two to help aid you in making sure that those stitches are loose. Because if your stitches are too tight, you're not gonna be able to see the stitches. It's, it's gonna be very, very difficult. For this example, this tutorial, I'm gonna make a small swatch section of what I am doing so I can explain the instructions faster for you and get you through this blanket. Uh, I will give you the instructions on how many stitches I have going on, how many rows I have going on so you can follow along. What is great is this blanket does not have a multiple stitch count requirement. It can be worked in any number of stitches, which is awesome. So what that means is if you want to adjust the size of this blanket, just pull out your measuring tape and chain until you've met blanket dimension. Awesome, right? Or if you want to account for your border that we are going to be putting around the entire blanket, then just go ahead and make your foundation row chain uh, a little bit shorter than your blanket requirement. And then make sure that as you are making the border around your blanket, you keep adding row after row after row of your border until you have met that blanket dimension. Got it? Cool. All right, so for the blanket that I made, the inner rectangle, I chained 62 chains. So if you wanna go ahead and start making 62 chains, go for it. I, again, am gonna make a smaller swatch section to get through this pattern faster. So I'm only going to chain 20 chains. One, two, three. Again, make sure your stitches are loose. Four, what I mean by that, stretch out that that chain. Six, one, two, three, four, five, oh, six, <laughs> seven. And how I can count, how I go about counting is you gotta feel it. You, you gotta feel it, guys. You'll be able to feel it. So there's a hole. One, there's a hole, two, there's a hole, three, four, five, six, seven. You can, you can feel it. So a lot of this project is gonna be off of feel. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 18, 19 and 20, great. Row one, we are going to half double crochet in the third chain from our crochet hook. So feel for those chains. One, two, three. All right, so yarn over, insert your crochet hook into that third chain, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all the loops on your crochet hook. Perfect. All right, so the skipped chain two that we missed or skipped over does not count as a stitch, okay? So when you finish row one, row one, we are making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch or each chain all the way across. You will be two less stitches than you chained. So if you chained 62, then you should have a total of 60 stitches in row one, okay? I chained 20, so I will have a total of 18 stitches in my row one, okay? So the number of stitches that are in row one are two less than how many chains that you chained. This is super important because this blanket is highly textured and it is difficult to see the stitches, it's difficult to see the chains, we have got to count. The pros and cons of working with pipsqueak yarn or highly textured yarn is con, it is hard to see the stitches, but pro, if you need to add a stitch somewhere to stay on count, you cannot see where you added a stitch. So it's easy to make adjustments, it's easy to make corrections, and you, you won't be able to see it. If you go about your blanket not counting, believe me, your blanket is either going to expand or it's going to in or decrease 
inward. And if it starts doing that, there's there's no recovery. So you're going to want to count every single stitch of every single row to make sure you're staying on count. It will become repetitive, it will become rhythmic, and you will just fall right into it. But you will notice at the end of a row, if you're one stitch short, you just throw a stitch in there and then you're back on track and nobody will know that you just added a stitch somewhere. No one will know. So how I work my stitches is really a lot of feel. I just, and I will poke my finger through a lot of the stitches. That's another reason why working loose stitches is such a big deal. So that was my first stitch chain. So next, right there, I will add a half double crochet. Row one, we're just making one half double crochet in each chain all the way across. Okay, so next one over, right there. And again, counting stitches. If you lose count, of your stitches, here's what I do, okay? If I lost count of where I was at, I'll take my work and I will stretch it, stretch it, and then I'll start looking for those holes and poking my finger through holes. <laughs> so here was the chain two, my first half double crochet, so one, then two, three, four, so I have just accomplished four half double crochets and I'm moving on. So here is where my stitch was. Next one over, half double crochet. Next one over, half double crochet. Now this is also a blanket that if you only pick up one of the yarns, you don't quite hit both yarns or go under both loops of the stitch, if you do it once or twice or even throughout, this blanket is not going to pick up working a front loop only or back loop only. It, it, it's too textured, it won't, it won't pick that detail up, okay? So if you end up just picking up one loop of the stitch, it's okay. It's a very forgiving material It's just a little tricky to get through. Again, it's going to take a lot of paying attention and a lot of counting of your stitches. And I know I'm doing a lot of talking, but believe me, as soon as I pause this video, I'm gonna be counting to make sure I stay on track. 17 and 18. Okay, so that's where I want to be. I want to be at 18 stitches across here. To move on to row two, we will chain one. Chain one. We will turn our work. And for the rest of this project, guys, the rest of this inner rectangle, we're just making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. That's all we are doing. We're going to repeat this chain one, turn our work, half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across through the end of row 84. If you're working the same exact dimension, same exact blanket that I'm working, your inner work should measure 23 inches wide by 39 inches long. If you are following the exact pattern that I am doing. Here, let me get through row two and then I'll show you how I counted my rows to identify that I made it to 84 rows. Poke your finger through the stitches so that way you can see where your stitches are. And then here is how I work my stitches. I don't try to find the, the loops on the top. I just work between stitches. So I'll yarn over, insert my crochet hook between those two stitches where I had my finger, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Okay, so next stitch, yarn over, inserting my crochet hook between those stitches where my finger was, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So there's two, again, remember, you gotta count. Okay, so that was that one. And then the next one is right here. Insert my crochet hook where my finger was between the stitches. And there we go, okay. Next stitch, three, four, five, 
six, 17, and oh, great, 18. That's right where I wanna be, perfect. Okay, you might see a little bit of hangover here. That's fine, ignore it. It's going to disappear, especially when we throw the border on it, okay? This is what we're looking at at the end of row two. Really solid, right? If you take your work and pull it apart, you start to see the holes a little bit better. How I counted my rows is I stretched it out and then I was like, okay, here's a hole. There's one, two, and then three, four. And then I'd stop, then five, six, seven, eight. And I was able to do that. If you want to, you can also use a row marker, stitch marker and put, or even like a small scrap yarn or something and put a scrap yarn or a stitch marker in the side of each row and then count those as you work up. That's another helpful little tip for you. But that's all we are doing, guys. We reach the end of the row, we chain one, we turn our work, and then we just make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. And again, I poke my finger between the stitches and work in between the stitches. Now, if you are one of those people that are super concerned about holes for baby's fingers and baby's toes, and my process, my tip here of sticking a finger between the stitches is concerning you at all, I am really working to get my finger in there, okay? And when the project is finished, this work is very solid looking. So if a baby is gonna get a finger in there, they're gonna get a finger in any project, okay? It's not one of those projects where it's easy to get a finger in there unless you really push your finger in there with purpose, okay? So go ahead and finish the inner rectangle body of your blanket and I will meet you at the end of your section to show you how I do the entire border around this blanket. It's really cool. All right, I just thought of a very helpful tip that might help you out in the process of you making your blanket. So when you run out of yarn, let's say you used up a whole skein of yarn, how I transition into my next skein, my join to con connect more yarn to keep going in the project. So let's just say, right there, okay. Let's say that you're crocheting, crocheting, and you're running out of yarn and you are like, okay, I need to attach a new skein of yarn to the project. Here's what I do. I will take the yarn that is attached to my project and I'll have it run that direction. I'll take my new skein of yarn and I'll have that yarn go that direction. I will bud them together. Then I'll take these two yarns here. I will wrap them around two fingers. So there's that little tail hanging out there. I'll take that tail, I'll go over, so over the yarns between my fingers and poke it through so that it is the little nub is poking out towards my fingernails then I'll grab that little tail remove my fingers pull the yarn and it creates a knot on that side of the work now let's go to the other side so got my two strands of yarn two fingers wrap both strands around both fingers take the little tail Go over between the fingers and through. Oh, let's do that again. Going over between my fingers and through. So the tail is poking out towards your fingernail. Grab the tail, remove your fingers, pull the yarn. So now you have a knot here and a knot here. Grab this yarn, grab this yarn and pull. Now the friction of the pipsqueak yarn will come into play, but it will allow you to pull those two knots together. Then grab your scissors, take this tail, cut it fairly close to the knot, and then same thing with this tail, cutting it fairly close to the knot. And now you have a very strong knot that isn't going anywhere, and it will completely camouflage in your work. So as you continue to crochet your blanket. So there's the join right there. 
and continue on. And doing that finger trick here. Okay, now let's go back and look at that join. There's the join. Can, can you see it? There, there's the knot. And really I kind of, I can see it more clearly because I just did it and I saw the little, little tiny bump there, but it camouflages right in. You can even push it in between stitches if you want to, but that's it. So now you don't have anything to come back and address at the end of the project. You don't have to waste yarn by switching colors at the end of a row. You can just keep going and keep moving on and it's done. It's called the Invisible Knot Join. I hope you like it. You can use it if you would like. If you have your own method that you like better, feel free to use that. I just thought that could be really helpful. All right, so continue on and I'll meet you at the end of this inner body section to show you how to do the border. All right, so let's pretend that we have just finished our blanket. Last stitch here. This is what we're looking at. Let's go ahead and cut off enough of a tail for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Then we will yarn over, pull that yarn through the loop on our crochet hook, pull tight to seal off or tie off that project, and let's move on to the border. So we're gonna go ahead and flip our blanket so that way the tail that we just finished is on the same side we're about to begin. Let's grab the color that you're gonna use for your border. Start with a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Slip knot, attaching our crochet hook. Perfect. Okay, so to attach the new color of yarn, we're going to slip stitch into the first chain here or first stitch so slip stitch and that just attaches the new color then we will chain one and for row one of our border we're going to make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across like we did before so even in that first stitch i just slip stitched into i'm going to make a half double crochet stitch and then in the next stitch, half double crochet. Okay, go ahead and make your way all the way across the top of the blanket, and I will meet you in corner number one to show you how we will work that corner and then move on to working the side of our blanket. All right, coming upon the very end of the top of our blanket, let's go ahead and count our stitches here. Remember that first chain one does not count as a stitch. Going for that first half double crochet, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17. Okay, great. I have one more stitch to make for my 18 stitch count. And honestly, that 18th stitch, so 18 will be the last stitch of the top. It's also in the corner. So how we work our corners. After you make the last stitch for the top here, we will chain two, one, two, and then make another half double crochet stitch in that same stitch space. But now, so half double crochet, but now we are set up to start working the side of our blanket. Usually I will make three stitches in the corner, but what I realized is the texture of this stitch, this the texture of this yarn made it really difficult to see those stitches to make sure that I was following along in that corner. So by chaining two, I have a big enough hole here where I can identify, boom, that is my corner, okay? For the side of our work, we are going to work one half double crochet stitch on the side of each row. So again, we're gonna keep working that finger method. So next row down is right here, working a half double crochet stitch, okay? Next row down 
half double crochet stitch and just working one half double crochet stitch in each or in the side of each row. There we go. If you want to count, just keep in mind how many rows we made. If you're making the same blanket that I did, you'll have a total of 84 rows. So you will make a total of 84 half double crochet stitches along the side, starting with that first half double crochet stitch after the chain two. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Going on the bottom of that stitch here, looking at the next row, half double crochet. You can do this. Just pay attention. Use your the finger trick if you need to. Pull your work. Stretch it out. If you want to stretch it out to see where the holes are, to see where the stitches are, see where the rows are. I've done that too to help me out and guide you. All right, continue along the side and I'll meet you in corner number two to show you how we will work corner number two and the bottom of our blanket. All right, once we have reached the second corner of our blanket here, you do not want to put anything in the foundation row chain. Okay, so pretend that doesn't exist. We're just going to go into row one. You would easily find this by if you were going 84, 84 rows, you would have counted 84 half double crochets at this point. Another good reason to count. Okay, after we make that last half double crochet stitch, we will chain two to get around this corner. One, two, turn our blanket so we are working along the bottom. And then again, working between the stitches, working in that same stitch space, same corner that we already put a half double crochet stitch making another half double crochet stitch there. And then we're all lined up to work the bottom. So between stitches, next stitch, next stitch. And remember we made a total of 62 chains. So we have a total of 60 stitches across if you would like to count. Last stitch and then entering corner number three. So for corner number three, we will chain two, one, two, and half double crochet in that same exact stitch, turning our work. So now we are working side number two or the third side, the last side of our blanket. And again, we are making one half double crochet stitch in the side of each row. So using our fingers to identify where the rows are and just working one half double crochet stitch in the side of that row. Okay, go ahead and continue on. And I will meet you at the fourth corner here to show you how we close row number one of our border, get onto row two, and then I think you'll be good to be off and running to finishing off this border. Okay, great. We have just reached corner number four. I'm going to make my first half double crochet stitch right there. What you will notice is in corner number four, there is already a half double crochet stitch in that corner before we even reach it. And that half double crochet stitch was actually the very first half double crochet stitch for this entire round one of the border. So when it comes to the fourth corner for round one, we all we have to do to satisfy the requirements of this corner is half double crochet, chain two, and then slip stitch into the top of that first half double crochet stitch, or really just put your finger there and slip stitch into that first stitch to close round one. And here is what we are looking at. What you will notice for the rest of the border is that we are going to be making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. The sides are going to be significantly easier to work now because there's already a stitch that we can identify and work with. Every single corner we can identify because it has that chain too, so it'll be very easy for us to figure out, oh, I've reached the corner because you will have reached that chain two section. 
In each chain two section, you are going to half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. The only corner that will ever change, so you're gonna repeat that row after row after row, the only corner that will ever change is corner number four because the yarn that we are adding to the project is going to continue to go straight this direction, but the corner of this blanket is gonna angle this direction as we work. So there's gonna be this gap space here where we are going to have to add a stitch every row that we grow because every row we're going to continue to expand this way which means there's going to be a bigger gap here before we can join our yarn and move on to the next row. Let me work three rows with you, give you an idea of how this will look, how it'll work, and then I will explain more of uh, how you will add or continue this corner row after row after row in the pattern. But I think that if I explain three more rows, you'll pick up what I'm trying to get at here. To begin every round for our border, we're going to chain one. Then we're going to find the first half double crochet stitch. It's right there. We're going to make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch across. So let's go ahead and continue and I'll meet you in the first corner to show you uh, us working that. And we're just kind of, kind of do a speed round here. Go really fast to get to each corner. Okay, coming upon corner number one, I just reached my chain two section. So in that chain two section, I'm going to half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. Perfect. And then we rotate and start working along this side. Again, continuing to make one half double crochet stitch in every stitch all the way across. I will meet you in corner number two to work that, and then we'll jump to corner number three. All right, corner number two, the chain two section here, half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet, and then we rotate and start working this side of the blanket border, continuing the one half double crochet stitch in each stitch across. Okay, so we have just reached corner number three, half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. One, corner one, two, and three are all worked the exact same. We rotated our work. Last side of the blanket, it's corner number four that's always different. So let's go ahead and make one half double crochet stitch all the way up to corner number four, and then I will meet you at corner number four to show you how we work that. All right, we have just made it to corner number four. I've just reached that chain two here. So in that chain two section, I'm doing the half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet, There we go, turning my work. So I am now facing this side of the blanket and now I just slip stitch into the very first stitch of round two here. So this was round two. Let's move on to round three of our border. So we'll chain one, half double crochet in that same stitch that we just slip stitched into and then make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. I will meet you in corner number one to work that with you. All right, we've reached corner number one. I know this because I found the chain two here. Half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. And continuing making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch across the next side. Perfect, made it to corner number two here. I know, because chain two, half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. Great, made it to corner number three, half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. Great, and then last side of the blanket border. All right, round three, corner four, we're going to find that chain two. In that chain two, we are going to half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet, rotate our work, and we will actually make one more half double crochet stitch 
because if you look to where the join is, there's actually a stitch between. So in round three, corner four, right after we do the half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet, we're going to make one more half double crochet stitch and then slip stitch to close round three, okay? And again, I'm gonna have a picture example of this in the pattern for you to give you a better visual because it is a little tricky using this yarn to see the stitches. All right, round four. Last one I'm gonna do with you because I think you'll pick up what to do after this. So round four, chaining one, making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch across. When you reach corner number one, which you will identify by the chain two, half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. Go ahead and continue working this entire border all the way around, finding your chain twos. If you need to stretch out your work to do so, it's helpful. And I will meet you in corner number four of round four to show you how we work this corner. All right, so I'll see you very soon. All right, meeting up with corner number four of round four here. So in that chain two section, making a half double crochet stitch, chain two, half double crochet. And now I'm actually going to make two half double crochet stitches before I slip stitch to close this round. So using my finger, there's one, and then right next to it, is one. See how there's a whole half double crochet stitch right there? One. And then I slip stitch to close. And that is how corner number four will work up differently than all the other rows to finish off the work because your join is always going to stay straight, whereas your corner is always going to go diagonal. So each round, you're gonna work your corner, your half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet, but then you're going to add a stitch here. So first I had one stitch, I just made two. So for round five, I would do my corner and then make three half double crochets. Then round six, do my corner and make four half double crochets. Then corner five, corner six, corner seven, corner eight, and you'd keep growing this every single row around that you make for your border. For my blanket, I made a total of 14 rounds for my border. So I made my border really thick. If you would like to count the number of stitches are in each row, just to make sure you're staying on count, each row you will gain two stitches per side of your blanket because of that corner where we are adding the two stitches per row. Okay, so for row one of my blanket border, or round one of my blanket border, the top had the same number of stitches that were in my border. It was a total of 60. So for row, round two of my blanket border, I'd have 62. Then round three of my blanket border, I would have 64. And you, you get it. So 62, 64, 66, 68, 70. And you just grow two stitches each round of your blanket border. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully it's not too much information. I really hope that you give this Pipsqueak yarn a try. Even if your corners, if you're noticing that your corners are bunching up a little bit. For me, I know that this is because I ended up having tighter stitches with my border. I was working it a little quickly and my stitches were too tight. So I understand, I'm gonna let you know this right now, that the reason why my blanket edges are curling is because my stitches were too tight. If this is an issue that you have, you can always go up a crochet hook size to help you out or just back it up and try to make looser stitches. I know that this was the issue because I made that whole blue blanket and the corners were fine. All right, so what did you think of the Snuggle Me blanket? How was it working with the Pipsqueak yarn? I know it's a little tricky. You really have to focus on the stitches. You have to count in order to make sure that you're staying on track but it does come off a very solid blanket. It's very snuggly. It's got those baby safe features that a lot of people worry about with holes. It's a very solid pattern. But even if you want to switch out the, the Pipsqueak yarn and utilize a different yarn, 
just have fun. I hope you had fun. I hope you loved this project. I hope you had fun hanging out with me today. If you liked this project, you might also want to check out these videos right here. It's a bunch of my blanket videos, which I think you'd have a lot of fun looking through. Or also check out this video right here, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I have so much fun. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.